Hidden in the African savanna is a tree as vast and old as time. Inside it lives the all-knowing Funzi, part robot, part sage, but nobody knows her true age. With help from her young friends at Team Sayari, they learn how to help the planet around me. Armed with cues and clues, they look to solve Funzi's missions with trailblazing adventures and planet-saving expeditions. What is that sound? I don't know, but it's freaking me out. I mean, where is it coming from? I wish I knew. Well, if it's an animal, I hope it's okay. Funzi, what's making that sound? Processing. The sound is too strange to identify. Well then, can you please help us locate it? Tracking strange sound. Finding location. Strange sound not located. No! However, it's time for a mission. Mission time! Mission time! Your mission today is to discover the strangest creatures you can find in nature and see how their unique characteristics help them build their ecosystems and contribute to our environment. Let's find out which creatures our friends in You Say Think Are Strange. What is the strangest looking animal in the world? Strangest looking animal in the world, turtles. A dung beetle is a insect. It's a crab because they look red. A jellyfish. Lion. I can't see the heart when you look through it or the eyes. I don't know. It would have to be the boot lace worm. It's a worm which is about 100 meters long. You say? Funzi, what's this? strangest creature you've ever heard of. The strangest animal is a human being. What? Why? Why? Because you're all too complicated for me to understand. Funzi's definitely talking about you, Sharma. What? Me? Oh, please. Dramatic human spotted and acknowledged as Shana, storing data. <laughs> Are you ready for your mission clues? Clue time! A tomato, a rainbow, armor, and a feather. Funzi, we definitely need some help. Let's go to Amani Reserve in Tanzania, where our field reporter Sabrina is on standby. Perhaps she could give you some ideas. Hi, Team Sayari. My name is Sabrina, and today Funzi has given me a clue of a rainbow. So I'm here at the Money Nature Reserve to figure out what it means. We wait for night because it's the best time to meet Alois. Hi. My name is Alois. I'm working here as a tour guide, so let me go to take my equipment. Are there many chameleons here? Yes, of course. We have uh, nine species of chameleon around the Amani Nature Reserve. Wow. But uh, in this trail, we are going to see the particular species which you cannot find it everywhere else, else in this entire world. Can you spot any chameleon here? Because I can see one. Yes, I found one! Yes, this is Triceros dermensis, the scientific name. And the common name is Usambara three-horned chameleon. Such a long name definitely makes it strange. It uses its tail if the predator is hunting for it, especially the hornbill. So when it's coming to shake the trunks to look for chameleons, chameleon can use its tail to hang. Its horn is used for fighting, but also to attract females. But also it can use its eyes, which can look left and right, behind the back, panoramic. So its strange features help the chameleon protect itself. But also its tongue, it's longer two times of its body. Why do chameleons change color? Chameleon always change color because of cooling its uh, body, also to attract uh, females or to communicate with each other. What? I can't believe that. Believe that? I thought it was about camouflage. Yes, chameleon can camouflage according to the vegetation. It helps it for hunting, 
for escaping the predators. Some people, they believe that chameleon has a poison. If it bites you, you can get some infection, but not true. Chameleon, a good friend, you can hold it, like here. How do you feel? Feels nice. <laughs> yes, it has no problem. Today, I learned so much about chameleons and how their strange features help them survive and protect themselves from predators. It even helps them find a mate. I now know more about why they change colors. And I was able to find out what the Funzi crew meant. Did you back at studio? I can't believe that Sabrina let the chameleon crawl all over her arm like that. I don't know if I could do that. Quite creepy. Could chameleons have anything to do with our clues? Mm, maybe. We have the rainbow, the tomato, the armor, and the feather. So far, we've learned that chame chameleons can give an epic side eye. But they also change different colors and are masters of disguise. Rainbows have many different colors, and chameleons change into different colors. No sound! Great job, ladies. Chameleons sometimes change color, and not just for camouflage. Let's see if these facts will clue you in. Chameleons often change color to warm up or cool down. Turning darker helps warm the animals because the dark colors absorb more heat. Chameleons use their color to communicate. They switch shades to communicate with other chameleons using bright colors to attack potential mates or warn enemies. Chameleons' eyes can move in two different directions at once. No matter their differences, all chameleons have a prized pair of eyes. On average, a chameleon's tongue is roughly twice the length of its body. In humans, that would be a tongue about three to four meters long. Beautiful sound of silence. The weird sound is gone. Maybe the animal that was making those sounds moved away. We need to continue with the mission. Right. We had the feather clue, the tomato clue, and the armor clue. Maybe this will give you some ideas. Mother Nature, who are you hanging out with today? I'm waiting for the gang to arrive, or more specifically, to bloom. Flowers under the sea. Wait, that flower is moving. It's not a flower, it's a jellyfish. What? More specifically, a baby sea nettle jellyfish. The young sea nettle is the size of a grain of rice and can live at the bottom of the sea for years. And when light, temperature and other environmental conditions are right, they begin to swim freely. How big do they get? They are up to five meters long. They sure do grow up fast. That's freaky. Wow, there's so many amazing creatures under the sea. And the sea nettle jellyfish is just one of them. Looking so light and airy. That's it. The way jellyfish float around in the sea is the way feathers float around in the wind. You're right. It does look like that. No salt. Congratulations, ladies. Perhaps it's time for a little trip to South Africa, where our field reporter Tando is on standby. Perhaps she could give you some ideas, patching her through. Molweni! Hi everyone! Welcome to South Africa. My name is Tando and I am in Limpopo to try to figure out what the clue Funzi gave me means. It's a picture of a tomato, so let's go find out what it means. Come on. Hi. Hi. You must be Dr. Lou. I am. 
What are you doing here? So these birds are called southern ground hornbills. <laughs> Locally here, they're also called the Thunderbird, and they're endangered in South Africa. So part of my job is doing research into them, understanding everything about their biology, and then also looking at the conservation problems and seeing how we can find solutions, because if we don't, we're going to lose these birds from our landscapes. They're about to take off, they're flying. <laughs> they fly! They're so big. Can I see you? You're the... welcome. Thank you. So have a close look at their eyelashes. Ooh. So they use them, it's almost like a little sunshade over their eyes because they're hunters. It's really important that they protect their eyes. That's not fair. My eyelashes are so short. <laughs> they're fine. <laughs> Why are the southern ground hornbills special? Okay, so they're the biggest hornbill in the world. Um, so these guys, a big male like that probably weighs about five kilograms. If you look at that amazing strong beak, it's basically like a dagger on the front of their face. And they can kill venomous snakes with one strike. Um, so if you look carefully at that throat pouch under the bow, the males are fully red. Many people believe that they can bring the rain in times of drought. They have this immensely strong voice and I think people like that, you know, it's a big, strong, powerful bird. What kind of call do they make in the morning? Do they go like... <laughs> or, <laughs> or like, wait, wait. <laughs> uh, not quite, close, but not quite. I don't do it very well, and it's much deeper than that, and it's much louder than that. It proves that they're weird, but beautiful too. I have never seen a giant ground hornbill before today. Such a massive bird with amazing features. Its strangeness is what makes it unique. Just goes to show that we should embrace our uniqueness. Have you guys figured out what the clue of the tomato means yet? I know I have. See ya! Tanda said that we should solve the tomato clue. Hmm. I know. Remember those ballish looking things on the hornbill's neck? Yeah, it's called a wattle. And it's the same color as a tomato. And the same shape and size. The wattle also grows in size to amplify their sound when they communicate. That's why they have a deep voice. Just, Just like, like Dr. Dr. Lucy, Lucy said. Three clues down, one to go. We only have the armor left, right? Right. So those tomato looking wattles really work for them. Yeah. It might look strange, but it helps them to adapt to their environment. Strange creatures have characteristics that might seem peculiar, but these characteristics ensure their species survives and thrives in their habitats. That means they're unique and special. I can relate. Box. Hello Team Sayari and welcome to Funzi's Box where we turn ordinary items into the most useful creations. Today I'm going to show you how to make something really exciting. We're going to make a paper piggy bank. You'll need a green A4 sized manila paper, a pencil, glue, a pair of scissors, a ruler, a black marker pen, a box cutter, and some stickers or anything you like to decorate your piggy bank. Get your A4 sized paper and get your ruler and pencil and measure 2.2 centimeters from one side and draw a line so you can cut it off. Remember, if you're not comfortable with using scissors, you can always ask an adult to help you. This is the exact size we need. Get your ruler and pencil and measure 1.5 centimeters from the top side. Measure 6.5 centimeters from the horizontal line and then draw a line vertically. Measure four centimeters from the first vertical line and draw a horizontal line across. Now let's mark another point nine centimeters away from the four centimeter point. Let's draw a line across. Go over the lines with a marker so they're easier to see. Let's draw a small rectangle in the first square. Let's draw a triangle in the second square. And now go to the last square and draw another triangle. Once you're done, it should look like this. Using your scissors, cut vertically along the lines until the horizontal line. Now we're going to remove this strip. This is what it should look like. 
Now it's time to fold. We're going to fold every line and for the last vertical line, fold it the opposite way. Now I'm going to fold these lines upwards. Now we're going to get our glue and then glue the edges. Make sure you give it some time to stick properly. It's time to glue the bottom. Get one flap and put it down and apply glue on the top of the flap. Now stick another flap onto the glued flap. Isn't it beginning to look like something familiar? Remember those triangles we scored earlier? Apply glue on this side and this side and stick it together. Now it's time to decorate it and I'm going to add some stickers to make it look more colourful. Now Team Sayari, you have your very own piggy bank which you can use to save up for conservation. Bye! Fundi's Fox! That was a great DIY, but that sound is so distracting. Is it me or is it getting louder? I can't stand it anymore. Fonzie, we need your help. I'm sorry. I am still unable to identify the sound or its location, but I'll keep trying. Shana, let's just take a look around. Wait, I have another idea. Let me look for a soundbot app that can locate the noise. Hmm. Soundbot, locate strange sound. Soundbot, locate strange sound. Soundbot, locate strange sound now. I'm reading a lot of agitation in your voice, Shana. May I play a relaxing song for you? Maybe later. Let me try. Soundbot, locate weird sound, please. Pretty, please. It's working. What? Yes, finally. Oh, uh, oh, no, it's not working. Really? Again. Well, maybe solving the last clue will help. The last clue is armor. Our trailblazer today might just be able to help you, patching you through to Lagos, Nigeria. Hi, Tim Sayari. I am Professor Olajumoke Morenikeji. I'm the chair for the Pangolin Conservation Guild, Nigeria. I'm here this morning to look for pangolins. So come along with me. So this morning, I'm looking for the white-bellied pangolin. They are the commonest in southwestern uh, Nigeria. We do a lot of research into the ecology, into the behavior. We also do a lot of rescue. Uh, rehabilitation and release of pangolins uh, into protected forest areas. Pangolins are endangered. They are difficult to find because they are shy animals. They are very elusive. Uh, they are nocturnal, actually. When you try to find them, then you have to search very well. Wow, did you see that? I just got one. Amazing stuff. I love pangolins not just because they are cute, that's very obvious. I love them because I know they are worth in the environment. So if we remove all the pangolins in the ecosystem, what we're going to find is a boom in ants and termites because the pangolins actually serve as natural pest controllers. One pangolin alone can consume like 70 million insects in one year. Pangolins are so beautiful, they are so lovely, they are defenseless, and that's another thing that endeared me to them. All the scales cover the body. Uh, you can see the color of the scales. It, 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 it serves as a camouflage, you know, and then it also protects itself with the scales. The tail and the hind limbs help in balancing and walking. You can see that there are claws on the limbs. All the underbelly where there are no scales are hidden away from any predator. Nigeria is a hot spot for pangolin trafficking. We're not just only a source for pangolins, we're also a transit country. The pangolin is endangered. It is going into extinction. Team Sayari, I want you to protect the pangolin by creating awareness on the plight of the pangolin. Oh, the pangolins are so cute. 
The professor said that one pangolin can eat 70 million insects per year. I can't understand how they're still so tiny. Does this skin remind you of anything? Mm, I don't know, maybe like a thick spiky blanket or armor or... You've got it! The pangolin scales act like armor. Yes! Our last clue! Mission complete! Mission complete. Good job, Team S. The yes. pangolin scales are indeed their armor. These strange creatures use their scales to protect themselves. Like how a knight in King Arthur's court wore body armor in battle. <laughs> Pangolins are the most trafficked mammals in the world. Over the past decade, over a million pangolins have been poached for their meat and scales. Over a million pangolins get poached in a few years? That's horrible! Like the professor said, we need to raise awareness and help protect the pangolins. That's right. Let's learn more about the importance of strange creatures in our world without. Nature packs a punch, giving us all kinds of wonder. The best of which are strangest creatures to ponder. From the wood frog that dies in winter and comes alive in spring, to the immortal jellyfish that cheats death like it's nothing. Their extraordinary features help them adapt to their environment. To the rest of nature, they're a great compliment. From odd colors to peculiar shapes and sizes, everything's a perk. Without these strange creatures, the world would cease to work. So look inside and embrace what makes you different. Cause that's the secret sauce to making you truly magnificent. And once you love the very things that make you strange, you'll fight harder to bring about a global change. So be bold. Don't ever fold. Forget what you've been told and break out of that mold. From within you lies nothing but gold. I love all the strange creatures. They're so interesting. They're not even strange anymore. They're cool. Yeah, the characteristics help them contribute to the ecosystem in so many ways. They make them stronger. Great job, Team S. You've all learned that strangeness is also a good thing and what makes you special. All the qualities you think are strange about you could also be your strengths, your gifts to the world. The strange sound is getting louder. It's getting closer. Where is it coming from? I don't know. Over there. I'm getting out of here. Whoa. Shana. Marita, guys, where are you going? It was a joke. I was playing a practical joke on you guys. Come back. Hello? Ugh. Humans, what strange creatures. 